I think that there is like this amazing high of like breaking into an abandoned building and making it into something and feeling that you can create something out of this empty space that you know you can the, the feeling of authorship over life which I think every real political movement gives people is the chance to say okay I'm going to make things different by my efforts if I participate in this I will actually have an effect on things and I think the squatters movement is particularly strong in that regard because it's not just going out and affecting some political issue that's distant from you, it's actually, you know, affecting your own life and affecting your immediate surroundings and those of people around you. Okay, um, in the 1980s, uh, when I was starting out drawing comics, and so was Eric Drucker, so was Paula Hewitt, um, Peter Cooper, um, he had this guy named Ronald Reagan. And to anyone who grew up in the 60s and 70s, or at least to us, Ronald Reagan was quite, quite shocking because he said things that we'd been taught were stupid things to say. For instance, he said, when I was a young boy, we never heard of this thing called racism. This is some recent invention. He said this, and yet he was amazingly popular. He said trees cause pollution. He got on television and joked, um, we, have out, we have just passed legislation outlawing Russia forever. The bombing will begin in 10 minutes. He, you know, was this avatar of everything that seemed ignorant and everything that growing up in the 60s and 70s we learned was false in the older generation and that the older generation had to a large extent admitted they had been wrong about and yet suddenly here was this guy. And that really shaped our worldview a lot that, you know, Somehow, we're not communicating to the majority of people the things that we think are true. The political situation in the 80s was such that we wanted to make a statement and that there was a feeling that you needed to reach people. And the fine art world had really rejected communication. It was very opposed to communication. Um, was very opposed to narrative, was very opposed to representation, um, and comics had maintained representation. So uh, we were looking for a new way of talking, and a big influence were like the woodcut artists of uh, the 1920s and 30s, like Lynn Ward and Franz Masriel, who did you know, wordless books, whole stories in woodcut. And that was, had a big effect on us. Um, we obviously chose to work in black and white because it was affordable. Um, we could print it ourselves, and I've never wanted to do artwork that didn't go anywhere. I don't feel good about a piece that isn't published or isn't displayed. And so I tended to work a lot more heavily in black and white than in color, even though I had some capacity to work in color when I was a kid. I haven't really developed that. Uh, and I'm just experimenting with it now. Um, um, I started out doing propaganda cartoons for all the radical movements in New York City, and the squatters definitely wanted a lot of graphics. And, um, so I was supporting them by providing free artwork that was used quite a bit and also by printing their writings and artwork supporting their actions in our magazine World War III Illustrated. And a lot of that material um, was I, somewhat simplistic. It was propaganda. It was in, you know, saying, look, this, these, this, these are the good guys. You should support these guys. And that got used in a lot of flyers and moved around a lot. And from that point, there were people who said, okay, so you're doing flyers for us, why aren't you part of the squatters? You 
know, seeing as you're doing all this artwork for us, you know, why don't you take a space and, you know, why don't you do this? And, you know, even people said, how can you do this artwork if you're not part of the activity? You know, when in fact the artwork was done as a favor, you know, so everything gets kind of turned around. And so to the point I said, okay, let's check this out. This seems really exciting. And I became more involved in it and went through, you know, a four-year period of my life when I was intensely involved in this activity. And at that time, you know, there were photographers on our ass all the time, taking pictures of every goddamn thing you did. And there were journalists, you know, running in and out of things, putting their own versions of things into the papers, usually highly distorted. A few people were good. Um, Colin Moynihan was quite good. Um, but a lot of the journalism was very distorted and very biased. And a lot of the photographers were quite heroic in getting pictures, but um, that material would then be used in the media in ways that were not positive. So, and then there were cartoonists like Stan Mack did a lot of cartoons about what was going on. So, you know, there were a number of us, myself, Eric Drucker, um, Paula Hewitt, who had been doing political art with a neighborhood bent for a number of years. We'd been doing posters on the street. We did posters against the police killing of Michael Stewart and the police killing of Eleanor Bumpers. We did posters against gentrification. Um, Eric was involved in a tenant union called Angry No-Ho Tenants. I was involved in a tenant union in my building. Um, we were both involved in campaigns to get drugs off the block. And we did posters and graphics for all these things. And. Um, you know, so when the squatter thing started heating up, we of course did artwork for it, and of course, as someone who was then involved in the situation, um, I started saying, hey, what an amazing story this is. You know, what an incredible set of events these are. And I started doing pieces based on that, and those pieces became a lot more detailed and a lot more narrative and a lot more if you will, cinematic and structure than my earlier propaganda pieces. And I started having to deal with a really difficult issue, which is character. And, um, you know, the fact that, you know, a person is not an idealized social unit. You know, a person is not, you know, Joe Squatter, Joe Black person, Joe Revolutionary. A person is an actual person who has a lot of contradictions and you know how to write about that in a way that wasn't lying you know because I didn't feel I wanted to lie as an artist I never have you know um, I've never liked the idea that propaganda is associated with lying so I felt if this is something that's this present in my life it has to be incorporated in my work um, so I started working on longer pieces that were of this nature, and they appeared, appeared in World War III Illustrated, they appeared in Heavy Metal Magazine, they appeared in various places. Um, then, in um, the mid-90s, um, I had a series of negative interactions with my housemates, which caused me to give up the space of the squad, and sort of return to a private life. And at that point, I said, well, let me record all this, because this was a huge experience for me. And I did a graphic novel called War in the Neighborhood, which, um, you know, it did deal with a lot of the internal contradictions of the community, and I know not everybody feels great about what I showed, but I think I showed myself making some mistakes, too. You know, um, of course it's from my point of view. I assumed at the time that everybody else was going to do the same thing. I assumed that you know, other people, and there were plenty of other cartoonists, and there were plenty of writers, and there were plenty of artists, and plenty of photographers in the scene, that they were going to do their own books, their own movies, and they were going to put out their version of things. So I didn't feel that I had to be shy about my own point of view. You know, what I found years later is that very few people have recorded that period, that most of the material that was produced at that time was for immediate consumption, and that now seemingly nobody wants to talk about it so that in a lot of ways War in the Neighborhood stands alone as one of the only documents of the period 
that has circulated, which I think is sad. I think there should be other books on it. Um, I would encourage other artists, you know, Fly or Lawrence Vanabeam or whoever, to do books on it because I think it's historically really important and they will have a different point of view than I did.